Hey, what's up guys, Boba Rail here, and today I'm going to be giving my honest first impressions of Vigors Season 11. I've now put probably about 6 hours of playtime using most of the guns that have been changed and seen how they play in a normal encounter against real players. Most of my time has gone into Kirsten specifically, and I'll also give my opinions on that and cover any small changes I may have missed in my update preview video. So, let's jump right into this. Alright, I'm just gonna come out and say I really enjoy the update. I love the map, the gunplay feels amazing, and in my experience overall, it just made rifles and shotguns feel much better. But there's also been some subtle changes made to the game as a whole. First up, I'm gonna be talking about Kirsten because, well, it's the biggest addition. Overall, the map plays pretty nicely, and I really like the terrain and prop placement. But I must say, I've been noticing some patterns in its map flow. Really, in almost every encounter, the whole map funnels into this area along the South River, and everyone either pushes into close quarters or snipes from the opposite ridges. Now, that's not even necessarily a bad by any means, because they are well-designed areas, cover-wise, but it also leaves large portions of the map generally out of play or unused. I especially noticed almost nobody was bold enough to go inside or even hang out at the top of the dam, and most of the time when I would hit signals, no one would be there. But this could easily change as the season progresses, and after all, it's still only day two, so that could end up flipping completely as the player base adapts to the new map. Now, let's talk about guns. Like I said in the intro, I'm very much a fan, but the only thing I feel they might have went a little overboard on is the SKS, which doesn't even need that much, let me make that very clear. It's really close to being perfect, but I think it's a little too strong as is, and could use a little bit more recoil as a result. I said that's probably what it needed before the update dropped in my weapon changes video, and I'm sticking to that now, seeing its true power against real players has just made it feel even stronger. Otherwise, all snipers and shotguns feel good, but balanced. The M2 is really strong, but still reasonable because of its recoil and lower average damage. And the BSS is good, but it still loses out to most snipers at extreme distance because of the slower bullet velocity and heavy drop. Really, there's no gun that stands out to me as OP, but shotguns are now very relevant in the meta. With the Lashiev being a serious S-tier gun in my book, along with the Remington 870. That's not to say that the starter ones are bad either, but the IZH is now designed for mid-range definitively and is honestly so tight it's kind of hard to land shots in CQB. The Pigeon has good spread that is only really curved by damage falloff, and the KS-23 and the Sawnoff are now both incredibly reliable sidearms to actually consider using with a sniper. I'm really curious to see what our weapon frequency is in about a week's time when the meta evens out a little bit more and people discover more buffs on guns they didn't expect. Now, something that shocked me with this update was adaptive hit markers, in that a hit marker will now change in size depending on how much damage you dealt to them with any gun in the game. Now, I need more time to test this and figure out how it works exactly, but this is really cool, and I think the smaller the hit marker, the higher damage you did. On top of that, shotguns can now pen house walls, which was not that strong before, and I've noticed some guns can now pen large trees, especially the shotguns. I don't know if this is a bug or if it's intentional, but once again, me and Chris will have to test pen to find out. And we'll likely give a dedicated video to each one of these complex topics and features. The monkey, I literally have not seen one soul use these, so while cool in concept, I doubt we'll see much of them throughout the season. Although maybe that'll go up as people start to stockpile them from getting them from safe. Now that's enough about encounters, let's talk about our off mode. Elam has gotten an overhaul to its scoring system. Now, a team-wide pool of damage based on points is tallied and used to calculate your specific overall value to the team. So if you hit an enemy for 90% of their health and a teammate comes and steals your kill, you'll now get more credit for the kill than the assistant. We also have a wide range of new loadouts for both Elim and Shootout, mostly focused around the deeper weapon diversity and promoting guns that got changes. A lot more shotguns and snipers, which I always feel are the most fun in Elim, but I could be alone in that. In Shootout, the Lashiev is an absolute monster, and it's spawning pretty frequently. Not OP, honestly, at least I don't think so yet based on my use, but it really cleans up on Kirsten Dam. So yeah, that's my pretty quick first impressions of the update, and overall, I think it was a fantastic step in the right direction that not only pushed the game forward, but opened up tons of new doors for me and Chris to make content on. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.